Today's video is on 14 days to better vitamin D. Roll the titles. Konnichiwa, Goji Man here. Welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see all of your smiling faces again. As Emma said this morning, today's video is on 14 days to a better vitamin D. For those of you who are new to my channel, then please consider subscribing. I do vegan health and nutrition videos, so I'm sure there'll be lots of useful information here to help you lead a healthier and happier vegan life. Ah, look who it is. Hey. Any words of wisdom, my Jedi Master, for my little gojis? Just good morning and have a good day. Lame. <laughs> So one of the greatest health discoveries over the last hundred years was the discovery of vitamin D. In terms of vitamin D, there are five vitamins in its group, so D1, D2, D3, D4 and D5. And in terms of human health, D2 and D3 are pivotal. So when you sit out in the sun, exposing lots of your body to the sunshine for just 20 to 30 minutes a day, your body will produce in excess of 10 to 20,000 international units of vitamin D. Now, another very good benefit of doing this is that your body will activate over 3,000 different healing genes, which is why vitamin D is so important. And to give you an idea of how much 10,000 international units of vitamin D is, the RDA for men and women is around six to 800 international units. So therefore, if you expose your body to lots of sunshine uh, throughout the year, your body will have all the vitamin D it needs for the winter months as the body stores it. Dinner time. So as per the video title, 14 days to better vitamin D, if you expose your body for 20 to 30 minutes a day across two weeks, your body would get upwards of 280,000 international units of vitamin D, which is a lot. And just by doing this every day from April until mid-September, you'll be giving your body all the vitamin D it needs for that year. And just by giving it 20 to 30 minutes a day, you're probably not gonna burn your skin unless it's very hot, in which you should probably come down to about 15 minutes. And you certainly won't be exposing yourself to the associated risks of skin cancer. So we are just gonna to have to park this conversation for a short while as I need to get back to work and time is ticking on. But before I go back to work, I just need to check my fruits and vegetables aren't burning. Am I glad that day is over with? And on that bombshell, I'm gonna go home and get some tea. I need a splash of water, it's way too hot. Now, another really cool thing about vitamin D is that it's what we call an epigenetic modulator. Um, so it helps to protect you. So we know that genetics doesn't control your health outcomes. And as the saying goes, genetics loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. 
So these 3000 healing genes that are activated when our bodies are exposed to sunlight are helping stack the cards in our favour as they help repair our DNA. Vitamin D is therefore probably one of the most epigenetic substances on the planet. Now one common question I always get from people is that they are stuck in an office all day, uh, they don't get sufficient exposure to the sunlight, so should they take a vitamin D supplement and if so, which one should they take? Now this is a bit of a double-edged sword for me because I will always advocate sun exposure over vitamin D supplements. So vitamin D effectively acts like a hormone in the body and there is very little research over the long term on vitamin D supplements that has looked at how safe it is in the body. Now there are also a number of large meta-analysis studies such as this one in 2014 that looked at over a quarter of a million people and showed that vitamin D supplements did little to prevent cancer, bone issues or even heart disease. With that being said, if you are going to supplement, then here is some general tips and advice for you to have a think about. Now there is fierce debate and controversy in the nutrition world over which form of vitamin D people should actually take, whether it be D2 or D3. Now as it stands today, the growing body of evidence suggests that it is D3 that is more effective at increasing vitamin D levels in the blood. So if you are going to supplement, then I suggest that you take a D3 supplement. So one of the main problems for vegans today is that the majority of D3 supplements are made from sheep's lanolin. So they get the sheep's wool and manufacture vitamin D3 from that. So for vegans, this is obviously a no-no. That's Emma, so yeah, come on, let's go say hello. Haha, -ha, look who returns. Hi. <laughs> with a big plate of food as well by the look. I know, I kind of like, it didn't look this much in the pan and then I poured it out onto the plate. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat it all. Why don't you tell my little gojis what you got on your plate? Um, it looks like mush, but it's actually mushroom risotto, um, which I pre-made like over the weekend, I think. Um, and then there's a load, it's propped up by a load of kale and um, broccoli, asparagus and onion underneath. So I think most of it is actually broccoli and kale, but uh -huh. yeah. Well, it looks good and I'll, I'll leave you to it. See you in a bit. Thanks. So Emma has now made me very hungry. So I'm just gonna rustle up some food very quickly and then we're gonna continue this little conversation we've been having on vitamin D. So that's dinner put on. Let's go back upstairs and finish this little conversation on vitamin D. And then we can go outside and enjoy the last of today's sunshine. Now, as I said earlier on, vitamin D is a hormone. In fact, it's a steroid-based hormone, which means that you have to be extra specially careful when taking it at higher doses. And this is because it sits in this balance between cortisol and estrogen, and the anabolic hormones such as progesterone and testosterone, and also the thyroid hormone and DHEA. Now D3 fits in this equation as it helps with progesterone and testosterone metabolism and one of the most powerful aspects of vitamin D3 is that it opposes estrogens and toxic estrogens in the body such as xenoestrogens and phytoestrogens and it also opposes cortisol, your stress hormone. Now if you're dealing with any type of hormone or thyroid type problem in the body then vitamin D is going to be of paramount importance in resolving these issues for you. Now finally, I just want to say that I personally don't take a vitamin D supplement. I try and get my vitamin D from sun exposure. But for those of you who do take a vitamin D supplement, then let everyone else know in the comments below which brand you take, as this will potentially help others in choosing a suitable brand for themselves. But as I always say with these things, do your research, choose a good quality product, and don't settle for second best. Right, time to go outside and chill for a bit. Come on. Plants need watering. Do you fancy some slow mo action?
So that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below, and I'll choose one of these questions to answer in Friday's video for you. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live.